When I was nine years old, my dad gave me my first camera, a brownie Hawkeye, so that I could take pictures of the things that were of interest and that mattered to me. What you see here on these walls wrapped around the room has grown from the seed that my dad planted so long ago when he put a camera in the hands of a child. My mom was born on a farm in Sioux City, Iowa. And I've always known because of the places that I've been drawn to to photograph that there's a huge piece of me at the core of who I am, which, which comes from the country. So I've done a number of projects, one of which included spending two years documenting the last farmers in the county where I've grown up and where I still live in Rockland County you know, sleeping in the cornfield in my back of my pickup truck and the cabbage patch and everywhere else. But the, the rural life and landscape of upstate New York and Vermont and New England has always been a huge magnet for me to pull me there. I thrive when I get in my truck and drive up to Washington County. As soon as I get out and I feel the air and I step out on the, on the land, I, I, I see the hills and I, it, it just warms me. It just it invigorates me and thrills me. I wanted to get an understanding of what the topography looked like before all this, these homes were here and everything was built up. Fields, fields, um, crab apple trees, open space. It's a slower time when one would travel the back road here, past farms and past cow pastures and things like that. This man represents uh, someone who lives close to that environment. But it also to me represents um, some uncertainty as we don't know what's up over the next hill. These people know their backyard really well. This is Rupert Rose. He lived in the Civil War era house, uh, and now you can see that there are new homes in a cul-de-sac and right in his backyard. But actually, the, his backyard that you're looking at with those homes was once a cow pasture where his, where his family worked. I know that he's feeling like it's just, it's all closing in on him, and at this point, there was really not a whole lot he could do about it. He... I wanted to capture a sense of place in my photographs. If I photographed a farm or a pasture, I wanted to see it in, in a special light. I wanted to see the fog rising off it. I wanted people to know once it was gone what it was, what was the essence of this place really. And, and what it was that brought many of us here were these places that were, that are now disappearing. My friend Don and I, have built this HO scale Delaware and Hudson model railroad. We're trying to create a scale model of a real section of a real railroad. The big reason why I chose the D and H is because it runs through some of the most beautiful countryside that you can imagine. I guess it was probably the late eighties, early nineties, I was probably driving up Route 17 on this section of the highway right here, either to go to Binghamton West or north of the throughway up into either Vermont or Washington County, probably a couple times a week. If I could move to a place that was simpler, that would be a great thing. And, but the problem with simpler is that very often it, it equates with more narrow-minded perspectives, if you will. I'm an artist. I don't live with constraints. I don't need to follow what somebody else does or follow a trend. I set my own trends or I set my own way. And if somebody wants to come along, they're welcome. And if they don't, that's fine too. Even though the artist in me wants to romanticize many of these places, there's another reality that exists there. Look at this barn. Look at this. Look at the light. 
Look at these tractor marks. Look at the tractor path. That is sense of place right there. You want to know what it was like? At four o'clock in the afternoon in Middleburg, New York, there it was. Sense of place to me is like, if you want to know, you know, what it was like next to, to stand next to Route 145 by Joe Perkins place looking towards the ridge in early December, here's early December by the Perkins place in Middleburg, New York, that scene right there would convey that sense of place. So all the things come together and, and show it in a beautiful, special light. And even now that I'm looking out uh, over this landscape of these leafless trees, I've never, and this all comes from the railroad, I've never s noticed how beautiful every little detail can be, even in the landscape, since I started building this railroad because now it's at eye level for me and it's so close and I can look at it every day I can change the lighting make it at different angles so if I can't see it with the light at this angle I move the light and boom cross light it and then all of a sudden I see every detail first train I ever saw was probably three or four years old so I'm sitting there at the table it's a birthday party and this circle of track looked like it was up on the on the dining room table and uh, just a loop of track with a little engine going around. So from a very early stage in life, I was looking at trains, model trains. My mom and dad stayed up one Christmas Eve all night till like four in the morning building kits. My mother actually helped my father put these models of buildings together and I was just you know, blown away by the fact that I had all these little buildings, I had a little farm scene and a chicken coop and all these things to then put around whatever I had, I think was a train set that they got for me also. Uh, by the time I was, you know, 12, 13, I remember I, I set up uh, my own, <laughs> I had my own train club, my own model railroad club that I set up in my father's shed uh, where all his tools and stuff w w was located and we set up a couple of sheets half sheets of plywood that we got from a nearby construction site and put the track down and proceeded to take all my mom's uh, seasonings you know the paprika and the and the um, oregano and all these things and that and that's it and that was the scenery that went on the railroad and you went in there and it smelled like you were in the testing ground for like McCormick's or something, you know, with all these smells like over the top, you know. But uh, yeah, I used to charge the guys like $5 a month to belong to the club and they could run my trains and we were going to supposedly use all the money to purchase new uh, equipment and new rolling stock for the railroads. My son was born when I was 20, and it was time to start breaking out some trains again. The boards again, the plywood uh, sheets were up on top of plastic milk crates, and everything was going around, and there was my son just, you know, at the throttle, you know, controlling it, which, of course, eventually led us to uh, actually getting out trackside, which is the first time that I had actually ventured out to get alongside the rails, the real railroad tracks. On Sunday mornings, we would go down to the, to the bakery and uh, pick up some rolls, some sweet rolls and coffee and juice and go sit down on a flat car down in the freight yard and just watch whatever was going in or going out and take it all in. I love all the paint and the 
smell the turpentine and the feel of art. I love all the scenic materials and I even like taking the little manicure scissors and cutting off little fragments of this uh, foliage material. You know, some guys will probably just tear it off in a sheet and glue it in. I just love to kind of play even with the angles of the blades of the scissors and just cut it into random configurations and then I take the tweezers and just like spot glue it just wherever my eye goes to oh it that needs to be there okay and then I pull off this little grass tuft and oh that goes uh, right there like as if you were organizing your room or your desk that doesn't go there it, it looks better over here and so you start to move stuff around and then oh that's too light so you take a little turpentine wash and just brush it on the foliage and Oh, that looks more subdued that 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 now looks right and it's just about having it get to the point where it just feels right to you it may not look right to the other guy but as long as it feels right to me chances are the other guy will think so too that's pretty much it there's a section on the railroad that is scale modeled almost of Cobble Steel New York and there's a fabulous old Cobble Steel coal dealer if you were to go to Cobble Steel today it's an amazing experience. You've looked at photographs of what Cobble Skill was like back in the heyday, or in this case, the heyday had already passed. Some of the track was in decay. Cobble Skill coal plant was not functioning at the level that it had been in prior years. But there's this incredible sense of nostalgia. It's like you go there and look at it, and there's this monster coal structure Cobble Skill Coal, which you now cannot even read on the side of the building. So it's basically slowly disintegrating. I'm recreating something that's a hugely nostalgic piece of our, you know, of our history, right? Um, it's a place uh, in upstate New York that makes me feel, if I could go back in time, I would want to go back in time to experience this time that I'm that I'm trying to capture in my model railroad. So the railroad that I've chosen to model is one which most of their diesel locomotives were grimy and grungy and nasty and they were limping along. Some of them, you know, if they were pulling a train up the grade, uh, you know, over Richmondville Hill or something, there are guys that actually have pictures of fire, flames shooting out of the smokestacks as these things are laboring. They're just beat into the ground and they're limping along like the, the theme of the railroad at that time was keep the trains moving, you know, at all costs, just keep the trains moving, no matter what it takes. As an artist, I embrace the imperfect in things. So everything on my railroad has a grit and a texture. The Agway looks a little weathered. It looks like a tired place where some old tired guys would work. And I also like to put myself in an imaginative way into the shoes of the men who worked at the mill. So I like to think of um, the old workers as the, the, the grit and the toil and the labor and the sweat that you know, made the country strong and at that time, you know, of course. You run into train guys everywhere. I was shooting a photo in a quarry up in uh, Howe's Cave yeah. and this pickup truck comes flying across the quarry. Yeah, you rail fan? The guy who got out was a guy named Jeff Handy. I asked Jeff, How'd you get started in trains? I lived next to it, you know, and, and being a kid, my godfather picked me up every Saturday, go up to Central Bridge, meet the train at the cross, and then come up here. We lived right here, you know, on 7. And he just, he was interested in trains, he got me interested in trains. It's in my blood. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's the power or it's the drama, it's the romance, and it's the power. Yeah. All that, you know? Well, that, that's how I made this country. That's, that, I love history. Someday. That was a good Monday? Years ago, I got heavily into rail fanning for a number of years, became very passionate about it. I guess I went through a divorce and I kind of got away from rail fanning. I just wasn't grounded enough or set, settled enough at that point in my life. So I stopped. But what had happened when I was out rail fanning was it took me to different parts 
of the Northeast. It took me to Canada, it took me all across upstate New York, up into New Hampshire and Maine and Vermont. And I had some wonderful experiences. But what happened in all of that was that many times the shot that I wanted was out on the other side of the bridge and the only way to get to that side without wading through the river was to go through someone's backyard and cross the track and set up on the other side. So I, so I very often found myself where I had to ask permission from the people that lived in these, in these great old houses, right? So I remember a f an old farmer in Eagle Bridge, New York, who lived, I believe it was called Dawn Lane. A friend of mine had sent me up there to check out the Batten Killies, this great old little branch railroad that runs through, uh, runs down from uh, Cambridge, New York. But anyway, I had to knock on the door and this old, this great old man comes out to the door. His face is all lines and story on his face. And so little by little, I started to really develop a, an appreciation for not just the trains and the rails, but the countryside that the trains traversed. And I found it fascinating, the people that I was starting to meet. So if you look on my railroad now, there's an old yellow house that sits by the track at Cameron's Crossing. This old guy out there, his name is Joe Cameron. And um, as a young boy, Joe Cameron was also, you know, five or six years old. Joe Cameron would hear the train blowing as it as was approaching the freight house coming, coming south through town. And Joe would scramble, whatever he was doing, he'd drop and run across through the house and out to the front porch just in time to catch the last blast on the horn as the train, as the local came by and the old guy and the engineer would wave hello and there was Joe waving back, he was so excited. And as the years go by, uh, Joe grows up to be a young guy with a camera that he was given by his dad, who worked very hard, uh, ended up with a job working down at the, at the Delaware and Hudson Freight House. But as the years go on, here's Joe Cameron now sitting out in his wheelchair and though he can't scramble and run across the, the house anymore, his wife, Bessie, likes to bring him out to watch the passing of the early evening local. Joe Cameron is not a real person. I don't know if the man who lived in the house was even named Cameron. I know it's called Cameron's Crossing for whatever reason. Um, and I doubt if anyone named Bessie lived there, although it's real possible. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm trying to choose a power consist for the next video that I want to shoot. I have the lighting all set up. Freight train, freight train, going so fast. Freight train, freight train, going so fast. Please don't tell them for train. Just outside the central bridge on the railroad is a little place called Frog Hollow. It's a couple little houses on a dirt road to nowhere. Dips down into a little hollow and over a stone bridge. And there'll be uh, a little drainage stream coming down from underneath the railroad. And it'll be settling into just a little quiet place down in the, down in the pit. There is no such place as Frog Hollow. That's a place that come from places that you want to create. It's the frog hollow of my mind. If I were to take a ride on a, on a Saturday afternoon or a day out of work during the week, I'd want to go up, say, up to Washington County and, and there's a place, a little town called Shushin. Not far from the old covered bridge and 
within ear, earshot of the, um, of the old passenger depot, which is still standing. And there's, you know, six to 10 houses and they call it Frog Alley. So I think Frog Hollow came from my experience at Frog Alley and just the way that the track passed right behind these houses and swung, you know, swung through there. And I, I could see myself sitting out in the porch and just watching the guy waving as he's going through town. And again, it's like, one, I guess it's a longing or, uh, or desire to be able to just to take a break from the pace of life. I could go somewhere slow. I could go somewhere simple and go to the country and go upstairs and just be surrounded by scenery and old buildings and, you know, it's just nothing that's complicated. Just something that aesthetically is very pleasing and actually the photo backdrops and the whole sense of the feel of country is just really, really soothing. I can go there, you know, five times a day if I want and just go upstairs. And even if I just stand there, sometimes I just stand there and look at the side of a building or a freight car or a little guy sitting on a loading dock and I'm just, I just disappear into that. It's, it's kind of like a meditation, you know? And I've always said when I, when I was going to build this railroad that I wanted my visitors to, the, to, to come upstairs into the house and myself to go feel like I'm upstate and I'm up in the mountains. And I'm, up, I'm surrounded by mountains and rolling hills and I can feel like I'm in the country and that's actually what, it's done, what it does for me and for people who visit. Thank you.